Praise the Lord, saints. This is Pastor Glenda Gray coming to you once again from Zion Ministries. Day number four of the seven sayings of Jesus Christ on the cross. Even though this is for Christmas, we are still doing what God is telling us to do. Today's um, verse comes from Matthew 27, 46. It says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But before we start on that, I want to read the in, uh, in that um, verse in its entirety uh, because of the fact that it is it says a little bit more and it, it reads. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? So it lets us know that Jesus has been on that cross for a while before he makes that statement. But I want, also want you to know that this was a, a, a prophecy uh, that came from David. And we actually see that prophecy in Psalm number 22. Uh, and this, uh, it says, a cry of anguish and song of praise, where David is not only uh, crying out to God, but he's also praising God in the midst of his going through. Now, it doesn't say what David is going through, but it is letting us know. I'm going to read you just verse number, um, numbers one through four. It says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabited the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. Okay, I went on to verse number four, but let's talk about this for just a moment. This is Jesus as he hanged upon the cross. Remember, as Jesus hanged upon that cross, and we don't have to have a movie to see it. We don't need uh, anyone showing us uh, those things, but we see as in, through his word, we study his word. We see that they spat upon him. They gave him vinegar for water when he said that he thirsted. They put a crown of thorns upon his, his head. They mocked him. You know, they did all manner of things. During those days, to die upon the cross was the most shameful way to die. But he did it for your sake and mine. That just shows how much God loves us. And so when, when Jesus is crying out, why has thou forsaken me? We must remember that the scripture says that God cannot dwell in sin. But as Jesus was upon that cross, he became our sin. For, for just a moment, God had to turn away from Jesus. And he had to go through that uh, without his father. And, and, and you know, every time we sin, David reminds us, Lord, when we sin, I'm not sinning against my brother. I'm not sinning against my sister. It's against you and you alone that I have sinned. And we never think about that, that we're hurting God. We're doing things against God when we sin. If we would just think about the goodness of God, then we can't even take the next breath unless God gives us the permission to, to do that. When we think of how we really truly depend on God, we need to stop taking God's glory, his uh, goodness for, for uh, weakness. You know, with that saying, uh, don't take my kindness for weakness. We know God could be saying that to us all day long because we do take it for weakness. But here Jesus is upon this cross and uh, he had to bear our sins for just a moment on his own because of the fact that God wants us to be able to receive eternal life. The scripture says that it, that it pleased God to bruise him for our sake. That lets you know that God loves us and he wants us to receive eternal life. And we must keep steadfast on our, in our walk with him. And, and as David here, he, he's not only going through, but he's praising God. Uh, you know, there's a song that says, I praise you uh, in the good and the bad. 
I praise you, whether happy or sad. You know, some of us praise God only when we're happy. And then we start going through and, and we think God has de deserted us or left us. And we have, we're the ones who have forsaken him. Others of us, we don't call on, to, on God until we go through things. But see, we've got to learn how to praise the weather that we're going through good times or bad times. Remember, when we're going through a bad time, the scripture reminds us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We also have to remember that God says he reigns, his, his, he reigns upon the just as well as the unjust. And that the, 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 um, we must live by faith. The just must live by faith. We must trust in God. We don't know uh, what we're going to go through, or like the old saying, we don't know who holds tomorrow, but we know, uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And so we know that our time is in God's hands. And God has already promised us that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will never allow us to go through more than we can bear. And he promises that when we're going through, He's going to give us a way of escape. So we don't have to be anxious. We just need to trust in God's word, knowing that his word is true. There's something about the name of Jesus. And so when we go through our trials and tribulations, when we just start calling out uh, to God and asking God to help us, He's faithful to help us as we go through our trials and our tribulations. And you know, we've got to be like James. James said, count it all joy when you go through your diverse temptations. I mean, various temptations, knowing that it's just a trying of our faith. And so for those of us who seem like it, 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 our, our, our trials and tribulations are getting harder and harder, just look at it like this. This is how God is, has enabled me to go through. That means that my faith must have must have grown because now I'm going through more because I'm walking more by faith and not by sight. We've got to learn how to count on all joy. We've got to learn how to still, it, it, no matter what we're going through, to still have joy. That joy is what's going to bring us through. Not that sadness and, and, and that hopelessness that causes us to do things that are not pleasing to God. But when we start praising God in the midst of it, that's why I like David. Uh, David, when David was running from his, his own son Absalom, David stopped and he began to praise God. He said, Lord, what, uh, how are they increased that trouble me? Many there are that rise up against me. Many there are that say to my soul that there is no hope for me in the Lord. He, but then he turned around and he said, but thou, O Lord, are a shield to me, my glory and the lifter up of mine head. David knew that no matter what he had to go through, he still could depend on God. And of course, we know that Jesus knew that same thing upon that cross. So his flesh for, for just a moment took hold. But then he stayed upon that cross. He didn't come down. He stayed upon that cross. And he went through the the pain and the pangs of death. And then he overcame death, letting us know that we too can overcome. He overcame the sins that were upon him, just like we too can overcome the sins that tried to overtake us. He overcame everything, showing us that we too can make it. And that's what I like about my Lord and Savior. He lets us know that we don't have to worry. We don't have to be ashamed of what we have to go through in this life to make it with God as long as we stay on God's side. God will lift up. And David says that same thing in Psalm number three when he was talking about his son of Absalom. God will lift up our bowed down heads. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And this is the time to rejoice. I know we've got so much around us that's causing us to be sad, but we've got to start rejoicing in the Lord and rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice in the Lord. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like an eagle. They'll run and not get weary. They'll walk and they will not faint. 
Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. All of those promises in God's word. So as we celebrate this holiday season, let me encourage you to go to God's word today. Don't leave out the true meaning of Christmas. Don't just be looking for the food, the turkey, and, and the friends to come around, but look to the hills for which come at our help, remembering that that hill is a hill called Calvary, in which God allowed his son Jesus to go upon to become our sins, that we might have a right to the tree of life. So let us not, and I'm saying this every day, God is pushing me to say it uh, 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 every one of these tapings, that it's not about the 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 gifts up under the tree, but it's about the gift upon the tree. Jesus went upon that tree on that hill. He died for your sins, not for anything that he had done, for your sins and mine that we might have a right to the tree of life. I don't know about you, but I can't help but praise God for the sacrifice and the joy and the mercy and the love that God has extended unto me. So let us not forget the true reason for the season. May God bless you. May God keep you and tune in tomorrow to see what thus says the Lord. Stay safe. God be with you until we meet again.